thank you guys for tuning in and checking this out. I appreciate it, and I and I want to go a little off book, if I may, uh, to talk about the events of of Wednesday, January sixth, twenty twenty one. At the top of the show, I mentioned that um, that's when Julian Assange was denied bail. And that story and the importance of that was kind of sidestepped. And I don't want me making this statement to sound like what happened, the, the events of what happened yesterday aren't important they are, but they are equally as important as Julian Assange not re- getting bail, getting released on bail. Um, and that really should be a, a, a part of the story. Everybody was also focused on the Georgia runoffs, uh, which, you know, my opinion is that, yes, the Democrats control the Senate and the House, which just means that they will continue to fuck over the American people the same way that they have. They've run out of excuses, which means that they'll blatantly fuck over the American people. Uh, and the hope is once they start doing that, that less and less people will support the Democratic Party. Um, and maybe it will it will pull the veil off of people's eyes that the Democratic Party is the party of good, is the, is the party of... Uh, you know, nice people or whatever the fuck people want to say about it. Because the Democrats are not good. They are just as bad as the Republicans. What happened yesterday was what happens in countries that go through emotional and social upheaval. This has been coming. This has been coming. I'm incredibly uh, disappointed, though not surprised, if that if that kind of makes sense. Uh, I got a text from my friend about what, all this stuff that was going on, and I, I knew some stuff was happening in D.C. I just didn't know the exact specifics of it. There's always so much going on, right? Uh, so you can't follow all the things at the same time. So I choose what I want to follow and, and the issues that I want to kind of amplified through what I'm doing. And what happened yesterday was you had a bunch of Trump supporters, uh, a lot of them probably, uh, you know, and this is conjecture here, is connected to some militias. There were probably some QAnon people in there. And Trump told them to go protest at the Congress, go take the Capitol, right? And then he said, go get uh, Pence. The media kept saying it was, you know, they they disrupted tradition in this ceremonial, peaceful transfer of power. And, and it is ceremonial by all intents and purposes. So one could make the argument that, hey, you probably didn't even need to do this. We probably don't even need to do this anymore going forward. It doesn't have any sort of real meaning. It's ceremonial. It's... Something to let people know that traditions are being upheld or whatever it is, right? If it's ceremonial, then we probably don't need to keep doing this. Um, the Electoral College has a has a ton of problems, and I know that. Uh, I need to do a lot more in-depth research on that before I make any sort of statements about it. But I, But I do know that the problems exist. So... Really, after we saw these white Trump supporters, a lot of them probably white supremacists, a lot of them probably uh, distrustful of the government, storm the Capitol, go in, get into the Senate floor, go into Nancy Pelosi's office, uh, steal a fucking podium, dress like they're Viking warriors. It should start getting people to ask the question why. It doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. But soon, 
maybe by inauguration day we can start thinking, right? Why? What would possess so many people to come to Washington, D.C. and take over the Capitol, right? Uh, run a coup d'etat, as it were. Commit an act of sedition. Why would they do that? One one response would be that these are disenfranchised people that were forgotten for a long time. The world moves forward, and uh, we're seeing people that didn't have rights before gain the same amount of rights that these people had. Right, the white these 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 Anglo white Catholics and Christians had um, more evangelical Christians than anything, but they they had. The most amount of rights, you know, as if it's something to to collect, to to accumulate like wealth or money or or a, a, a fucking card collection or stamp collection, right? They had the most amount of rights. And black people started getting rights. And brown people started getting rights. And women started getting rights. And the LGBTQ community started getting rights. And all of these different and new and complex ideas were getting. And I'm not saying that. These groups shouldn't get the right. They absolutely should have equal rights as all of these white Anglo Christian evangelical Christians and, and Catholics have. They absolutely should. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is their view, because of the way that they have been propagandized by corporate media, by their elected officials, by the education system, they believe that if these other people get rights, then what happens to theirs? What happens to the way that they've been living their lives? The reality is nothing. Nothing will change. Gay people want to get married doesn't mean that your marriage disappears. Black people get the right to vote doesn't mean that your right to vote disappears. But that is how the divide is being taught. I don't have an answer to how to break that propaganda, uh, though I think discourse is one way. But I also think that right now I don't think discourse is on the front of anybody's mind. Uh, I'm usually thinking about like, okay, how do, could have we solved this with a discussion or words or something along those lines? But you know, the reality is if you're if you're on the opposite side of these people, you, you should be looking at some of their leadership and saying, what the fuck? Ted Cruz is still saying there's election fraud. Trump came out in a statement saying there's still election fraud. The re and, and the reality of the, those statements there is that, you know, um, these elected officials are genuinely afraid of these people. Uh, they're afraid of the people that they galvanized. They knew they needed their votes and they were going to manipulate them. But, People like Trump and Cruz and anybody that's in this corporate-owned government to get away with what they need to have to manipulate and exploit people while not letting them know that they're being manipulated and exploited. And I don't think they fully realize the scope of what they do when they do that, the, the, the psychological ramifications of it. What happened with these people is that they felt isolated and forgotten. And throughout the Obama years, I mean, they largely were. Rural America was the butt of every joke. West Virginia is the butt of every joke. If you're not New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles, Chicago, maybe New Orleans, Miami, these big coastal cities... then you didn't matter. You know, you were you were you were a second class human being. Your voice and opinion was not being taken considered. So that validated that fear that if black people get rights, that if women get rights or LGBTQ community gets rights, their rights are going to be taken away because you weren't listening to them anymore. 
Again, none of that is true. We all deserve these rights that they want to sit there and scream about that they probably don't understand fully. So what happened in 2016, or rather 2015? Trump came about. And all he did, and this is the bare minimum you have to do, right, with people that are so desperate and disenfranchised, he just listened to them. And we listened to them, and then he essentially made it about him, right? Him listening to them. He became a demagogue. No one wants to look at that history. At least not, not nobody on the, the liberal and neoliberal side seems to want to look at that history. Trump is a representation of unfettered capitalism and excess in the American way. He is what it is. That's the face of it. It's not Joe Biden or Barack Obama. They want that to be. But Trump is the epitome of it. He's the most bombastic, boisterous, unapologetic, hyper-masculine, wasteful figure there ever was. And he listened to these people, and he took on their problems and said, I'll make it go away. One of the reasons why Clinton lost is because she didn't give a fuck. She was, what was she doing? She was selling dinners with fucking George Clooney for $350 a plate. What average American can drop that kind of money? It's not for them. And Trump, being the juxtaposition of that, showed them that. Now, he galvanized them, right? He basically said, all of your fears are true, and I'm going to make those fears go away by, uh, by, by doing it the only way that I can, by putting a, putting a ban on this, putting a ban on that, right? Making Mexico pay for the wall. I'll erect a wall. That'll stop. I mean, again, none of that is valid. None of that is true. These are not real solutions. These are bombastic solutions of a self-centered narcissist. They were his self-centered narcissist. Or, or he was their self-centered narcissist, sorry. And things kept escalating and escalating and escalating and escalating and escalating. And we got to this point where it became very, very important to them that Trump win. Because if Trump wins, then they get heard again. They have a voice. I mean, why was why were POCs so excited about Barack Obama? Because it's someone that looks like them that is now going to give them a voice. I mean, he turned out to be a massive disappointment. He turned out to be a neoliberal corporatist shill, just like every other fucking president that's ever come before him. But the idea was that he would give them a voice. Same thing with Trump. Why did these people decide to go and, and march on the Capitol? was because if they lose Trump, they lose their voice, and they become forgotten again. And nobody wants to be forgotten. Not one person in this world wants to be forgotten, isolated, and be nothing. Everybody wants to matter. And that's what these people wanted. And they're so desperate for, 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 for wanting to matter. They committed an act of sedition. Now, the cops let him in because the cops don't give a shit. They're not black or socialist. <laughs> so fuck it. Who cares? Let them in with their pipe bombs. The cops let them in. And the, and the mayor of D.C. has nothing to say about this. The, the police chief in D.C. has nothing to say about this. A former police chief goes on fucking CNN or MSNBC or one of those fucking networks and says, oh, if if, if, if I was out there, you know, th this would have never happened. We would have contained the crowd and so on and so forth. So now the reality we're seeing justifies the, the quote unquote, the, the left, right? I don't even know how to designate shit anymore. But the side that says that the police are racist and that America is racist just got validated because 
Black Lives Matter protests are bombarded with tear gas, rubber bullets, and a variety of uh, over-the-top brutality from the police. And the people that are literally committing a crime, one of the highest crimes in this country, got the doors opened for them by the police. Our side is validated, again, by the action. Now, we're not going to get any sort of real validation, right? Like, no no one, no politician is, is right now coming out and saying, um, oh, well, we need to investigate why these police officers decided to open the gates and let these people into the fucking Capitol. And not one of them fired any tear gas or tried any crowd dispersion techniques. Four black people get together to protest in a, in a group and they will lob a, 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 a metric ton worth of tear gas at them. Hundreds and thousands of Trump supporters storm the fucking Capitol and they go, should we use... What you, maybe we should think about it. Everybody just... If you guys could just stay there, we're going to go into the corner and have a, a have a share circle about what we want to... That shows that the cops are lined up with this this line of thinking, this white supremacist line of thinking. So what do we do next? There's a lot of people talking about impeachment. <sighs> Guys, this this was the reaction to a lost election, is that they stormed the Capitol, stole a podium, did some damage, to the, and the cops were fine with it. There's nowhere to go but up for them in terms of reactions, right? It's, it's, an, it's an escalation game. What do you think the next step will be if... Articles of impeachment are drafted, and within the end of next week, he is officially impeached. With one week to go, and Pence gets put in charge. These people don't like, they, they don't give a shit about Pence. It's only about Trump. Impeachment is a very bad idea. It's a very bad idea. Here's something else that the Democrats can focus on. And, and, I, and I think, once again, I mentioned the Georgia runoffs only to bring up this point. Um, Biden basically said if, if you know, Georgia becomes blue, then we, get, we all get the $2,000 checks, right? Because McConnell can't block it. So we'll reintroduce the amendment. It'll pass in the House just like it did before, and now it'll pass in the Senate. And then the checks go out. Um. Hopefully they don't they don't do the thing of like well we're gonna give you twelve hundred dollars because everybody got six hundred dollars already no 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 you should have been giving us two thousand dollars a month as far as I see it you're short about twenty two thousand dollars as far as I see it um this puts them in that position now they win Georgia which I don't know if they expected to or not but instead of focusing on the thing they said that they would do they're doing the exact same thing that they did for four years which is just scream orange man bad trump 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 orange man bad trump trump they have an opportunity here to show the american people that they do give a shit these people felt forgotten, yes, but there's also economic strife happening. These people also don't believe in wearing masks and staying inside and having their small businesses close because there is no financial reason why they should do that. And the government isn't providing them with that financial reason to do that. So they go and they do this thing. Again, if you want to alleviate the stress that people are feeling to the point that it bubbles over and they get so desperate that they lead into these kinds of groups and they take these kinds of actions, then you have a solution presented in front of you. $2,000 to every American person, which is a stopgap measure at best, 
then you can go in and revise to say maybe we should do monthly payments till the end of this pandemic till we can actually deliver the vaccine and everybody gets two doses and then we can actually see that the vaccines work and we're not spreading the disease around and we should back pay it where's that money going to come from oh i don't know maybe the trillions of dollars that you gave to the banking industry already they seem to have a lot of money that they got for free that were that that was a handout to them once again instead of focusing on what actually needs to be done to solve a portion of the problem to ensure that this sort of stuff doesn't get repeated again they miss and ignore it and they pivot and they make it all about an individual and not a system the system is the problem not the individual trump is part of that system it's part of that same crony broken system what they need is the country to be divided because if we're too busy fighting each other then we can't fight the system we can't change the system to better people's lives that's the reality of it that's what i see